So you've heard these terms, ballot harvesting, ballot harvesting, uh, 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 voter fraud, election fraud, election security. Uh, the election's 11 days away. Uh, what are your expectations? Uh, how should we respond? How should our leaders, uh, those who have a voice, those who are in the media, uh, what should their reactions, their response be uh, if we don't know who won on election night or if there are uh, uh, challenges in the various states? Well, joining the program now uh, is uh, Sean Roberts. He's the chief technologist uh, technologist with the Lincoln Network. Uh, and, and I know that you had a piece recently uh, in uh, Real Clear Policy, uh, but this idea of, of potential election crisis, uh, you've been on the forefront. Uh, uh, Sean, welcome uh, to WBAL. Thanks. Hey, so so tell Hello. us about your piece. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. Tell us about your piece in, in Real Clear Policy. Uh, tell us what your concerns are. Sure. So it, right now there's a, a lot of crosstalk going on around um, – what to be concerned about and, and who should we, we should be afraid of. And uh, really what we're trying to highlight is that there's always been some problems, um, but uh, breaking the system down and, um, well, I should say making radical changes to the system that exists today is, is um, the thing that we should be really worried about. Um, the system works relatively well as, as built. Um, it is intentionally distributed amongst the states and then distributed within the counties within the states. And they all run relatively independently of each other. And um, there, there are issues in particular counties, and, um, and there's, there's probably issues in particular states that could be improved. But overall, the system works as built. And we should focus on those individual areas that have problems and try to fix those rather than trying to make radical overhauls. So we're talking with Sean Roberts. He's the chief technologist at the Lincoln Network. The Lincoln Network, of course, uh, is uh, is uh, is a an organization, uh, Silicon uh, Sil Silicon Valley, uh, uh, trying to promote a more perfect union between technology and democracy. So listen, I've I've been um, I've been on the air. I've been on op-ed pages uh, defending. Uh, uh, American institutions like the Electoral College, like our legal system, like our judicial system. And I know that many people, when they think of election violence or trouble, uh, folks on the right uh, point fingers uh, at Portland, uh, Seattle, and what's happening now. Uh, but, uh, but I've been warning my conservative friends that we have an obligation, a responsibility uh, to protect the institutions uh, that we've been protecting all along, and that cooler heads need to prevail on election night if we don't if we don't have answers right away. What do you say about it? What, what, what's your message to conservatives and their responsibility uh, coming up uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a couple of Tuesdays? I would say that the institutions, by and large, are working as as built. Um, I, I think inherently uh, there's there's been a lot of uh, changes over the over this past year, which have um, led to uncertainty in a lot of people's minds of whether or not um, the results, the election results, will be uh, clear and uh, decisive in a timely way. Um, I would tend to agree in some areas that that has happened, um, but uh, I would say not to the not to the extent that has been reported. Um, Certainly, if uh, there's hundreds of thousands um, of more uh, paper ballots coming in via a different way, via vote by mail, by and large, for a, a lot of areas, then normal, it's going to cause a little disruption in the way that they actually run elections. Um, so inherently, unless the elections office, a particular one that's receiving more ballots, staffs up, for the actual hands that are going to have to touch these things and, and move paper around and run them through the machines and make sure the machines are working well, um, there's going to it's going to go a little bit slower than expected, which is unfortunate. Um, but whenever you have a complicated system like an election that's run in each county, um, it is a complicated system and it, it requires a lot of expertise. Anytime you make any changes, it's going to be it's going to slow it down. Hopefully, that's. Uh, a day or hours rather than uh, a week. 
but that really dep- depends on the individual counties of whether or not they stepped up and, and fully prepared. The ones I've been talking to, they have. Um, whether or not out of the 8,000 plus jurisdictions that we have, that there will be some that won't have done a good enough job, I'm sure there will be. And hopefully that's by far the exception. Uh, we're talking with Sean Roberts uh, from the uh, Lincoln Network. So what about the major media, ABC, CBS, uh, CNN, Fox News, and the rest? Um, have they been giving uh, indication in terms of how they're going to cover election night? Uh, what if there is no call to make? Uh, do, you know, does the uh, media, again, have a obligation, a responsibility to let their viewers know that just because there's no call doesn't mean uh, that fraud or that uh, uh, there's a disruption, but this is going to be this is going to be part of the process uh, for 2020. Uh, have, what have you heard from the diff- or, or maybe you haven't heard, but have the media outlets uh, put forward? Uh, this is what we're doing election night. Yeah, that's. I uh, from what I've heard, I would say that it, there has been somewhat of a more recently uh, uh, more uh, leaning towards calm from the different. Uh, uh, news outlets, um, whether or not that will hold, I, I'm hopeful. Um, I am optimistic that the states, that especially the swing uh, states, have um, they're fully aware, and, and I've spoken to uh, quite a few of the election officials in these states, so they they are aware that this is going to be um, all eyes on them, and uh, their uh, performance is going to be. Um, analyzed in the in the news media. So uh, the translation between uh, the secretaries of state um, who generally make the call, their office makes the call, um, unofficial elections reports, you know, the official elections reports are weeks out. Um, those don't happen right away. They never do. Um, what gets reported are the unofficial results. So right. uh, their timeliness and the quality of their unofficial results are going to be really critical and highly scrutinized, and they're well, well aware of this. So my expectation is that the news outlets will report this um, as they would normally, um, that if there is a large uncertainty, and uh, they would report that accurately. Um, but <clears throat> but I, I do believe that the swing states, it's going to be close, and it's going to be very similar to 2016. Um, so it will be um, highly watched. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will be watching the news and very interested whether or not their candidate, their issues are um, uh, going the direction they wanted it to be. I would, I would urge everyone calm and patience. Sean Roberts, uh, the Lincoln Network. I want to put your uh, most recent uh, Real Clear Policy piece up on the Jerry Rogers Show page. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we'll keep our listeners updated on your work and expectations uh, on for election. And and look, look. The bottom line is, uh, in the modern world, the United States is hailed as the world's oldest democracy. Let's trust our institutions. Let's trust. Uh, let's trust our legal system uh, to get this right. Uh, Sean, you have a great afternoon. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, that was uh, Sean Roberts from the Lincoln Network. I think this is an interesting conversation because uh, because we have seen lots of violence uh, in 2020, right? We've seen uh, myriad uh, uh riots in our cities, Portland, Seattle. We've seen unrest in, in, in our urban centers. Uh, we've seen violence. Uh, for, for a while there, it was day in and day out violence. We've seen uh, uh, police uh, uh, and riot uh, riot police uh, and even, <laughs> uh, in some instances, the uh, National Guard. And so I think the message here is that, especially for my conservative friends, uh, we support Uh, the unique institutions that make America, America, the Electoral College, uh, the separation of powers, the rule of law. And I think on election night and uh, perhaps even uh, a day or days after the election, uh, cooler heads must prevail. Uh, We have to. We must. uh, We must respect our institutions. It is hypocrisy. It is hypocritical for my friends on the right Uh, to say or point their fingers at all the violence from the left 
uh, but then we don't get our way on election night, or we don't, or 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 uh, you know, there's some controversy, there's uh, some things that need to be worked out, uh, and then we're calling for unrest. We must be careful here. America is too precious. Our democracy is too important, our freedom, the rule of law. And I think that, again, my friends on the right uh, have, a, have a unique and special obligation and responsibility uh, to make sure that on election night, uh, that if you don't get the news you want, uh, cooler heads must prevail. Let's respect the process. Listen, when we come back, uh, let's, uh, let's, have, let's, let's have some thoughts again on, on why what's happening on the national level uh, and uh, mirrors, uh, mirrors what's happening on the local level uh, and, and how all of this impacts you, uh, the kitchen table issues, your kids uh, uh, in school, uh, your job, your small business. Uh, let's talk about how politics impacts your life when we get back. 